Thank you ever so much for coming. Um, my name is Amanda. I'm part of the Transition Open Edible Gardens or Edible Open Gardens. Um, I'm a master composter for the county council as well, although I don't do too much that way. I'm also a gardener and I try and get everybody to compost. And I also run a cooperative that helps people grow veg at home, so we encourage composting there as well. This is my, my composting scheme. So if I can bring you over, um, I've got what I call a resting bin. This one with a pumpkin growing on an asturtium. Shows how lively it is, about how alive it is. This is, was turned in March and now it's just sitting until October and it's finishing off to become the, the compost that I'm going to put on my allotment. Mm -hmm. That one there and that one here, and there is a technical reason why they're either side, it's because then when I have to turn it, I empty this one and turn them both into the middle one. And both of these, which I'm still adding to, will actually end up fitting into that one bin. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why I do it that way. Okay. Um, and here we've got, uh, next to that we've got a leaf mould bin which is a one year cycle. So I put leaves in it in the autumn, mm -hmm. usually turn it in March. Um, in the winter, in October, I dig this up, I dig it out, I put it straight on my beds, I put some uh, cardboard on the top, weight it down with stones, I don't do anything else over the winter and that's my winter mulch, so I use my leaves for that. Um, over there behind, if you can just come around a second, my two year leaf mould bin is underneath there which is quite well hidden but it's actually full of beech leaves and beech leaves take a long long time to rot down so I leave them for two years so I put them in there for a year turn them over and then the second year I put them in with the one year leaves does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah? yeah okay cool I use pallets because the, some of the things that compost needs needs a lot of air and it needs a certain amount of moisture and I get lots of creatures in it as well, which actually is quite a positive thing. If you want to come over, I can't smell this. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. So this is, what, uh, this is one of my, um, what I call a live one. It's one I'm using now at the moment. And now the flies have started to come off. Some people don't like the flies, but certainly if it's at the bottom of your garden, in this environment as well, it doesn't matter. Because yeah. as soon as the top's off, those flies will be gone in a few yeah. minutes. They're there and they're actually contributing to the composting process. Okay. When you put compost in, especially things like grass clippings, grass is called an accelerator. Mm. Uh, when you add it to a compost, um, it gets very hot. And what you want when you make a compost bin is lots and lots of heat. Mm. This is my, what I call my resting one. And in October, what I usually do is I bag it up. I get some old compost bags or some rubble sacks. Just move my nasturtium there, which I eat. Um, again, I'm going to take the top off. There might be a creature, there might not. But uh, um, it is quite lumpy and got lots of bits in it. Lots, some people like to use what they call a riddle or a soil grader and they run it through that so they get this nice fine compost. Mm. There's nothing to hold any moisture in that compost. You leave these big bits in and you put it on your garden. It doesn't look as neat but when it rains those big bits retain moisture and you don't need to water so much. Okay. But it does add nutrients. It's not as nutritious as using manure um, for your uh, veg beds. But, but for your plant beds as well, it's absolutely lovely stuff and it helps with the soil texture. Yeah. I do no dig, so in the spring, I've put my leaf mould on in the autumn, put the cardboard boxes on. By spring, those cardboard boxes will be basically rotted. Um, there'll be lots of worm activity underneath any bits of cardboard that are left. And then I just put that on top and then I plant straight into that. So I don't have to dig, it's great. This is what I put on the beds in the autumn. So this is left over from um, last year. But this is really, really fine now. It's a lovely, crumbly, crumbly, crumbly texture. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, um, I think at Garden Organic, they're doing some research into using leaf mould because it's traditionally been thought of as not having much nutrition. Yeah. But they're doing a leaf, a leek growing project and they're tr they're, they've got three different types of growing medium and one of which is just leaf mould. And that's the one that's getting the best results. Yeah. So I brought this down this morning. And what we've got there, a bit of flour from the garden, a little bit of paper, it's absolutely yeah. fine to put, sh preferably shredded yeah. paper in there. Cardboard's fine, okay, so you can put printed cardboard in as well, but ideally break it up into sure, small yeah, bits. Yeah. Okay, what I've also got, tea bags, coffee grits, I like fresh coffee, broad bean skins and the normal. And you'll find some tissue in there as well, kitchen roll in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm vegan so I don't eat eggs, but eggshells are great for your compost bin, absolutely great. And they're also good for putting around plants that slugs like, mm. they don't like eggshells. Apparently, these coffee grits, they don't like coffee grits, and I always thought it's because it's quite a sandy texture, but somebody said to me they actually don't like the caffeine in it. Mm. So they're worth trying as well. But I end up putting it all in the bag, 
it's a recy made out of recycled materials and it is biodegradable so I just put the whole thing in my compost bin not ideal because it's plastic and I try and avoid using plastic um, the paper bags are much better but I sometimes struggle to get the paper paper liner. It might be worth noting that last year I got just under a hundred bags of compost out of this that comment yeah. and I got 40 bags of leaf mold. Yeah. Yeah. Saves a lot of money yeah. at the garden centre I reckon. Some snails having sex on my allotment. Oh no baby snails. Mm -hmm. I do find snails and slugs, so I just put them on the compost heap because that's where they belong. They help break stuff down. As we've got a moth, um, dandelion, I do put that in. It is a perennial weed. I'm putting that in because the root's not there. The roots right. have been separated. Yeah, right. If you put it in with a big root on it, it'll just carry on growing in the yeah. compost heap. So um, you can either do something like have a, what we call a kill bucket, which is a bucket of water and you drown it, or you can leave it exposed to the sun, it'll just shrivel up and die. That, this is personally what I do. I rip the tops off and put the tops in if I don't eat them. Yeah, so this is just ordinary garden waste. I don't bother cutting it up small or anything. I just put the whole lot in. Pooch grass, no. Bindweed, no. Um, ground elder. Have any of you got ground yes, elder? Got ground yeah, elder, all you can yes. do is eat it or move. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Eat it. You can eat it in the spring. It's a bit tough it's after disgusting. the spring. But it's, oh, is it disgusting, <laughs> yeah, is it? Horrible. But don't assume with bindweed. If you leave it out in the sun now and it looks all shriveled and... It starts it up again. It can grow yeah, again. It's unbelievable. Yeah, so drowning's better, but it'll take a long time, you know, two, three weeks perhaps, for it to drown and not be able to regenerate or burn it. That's the best thing you can do. Prunings, if you take, you know, if you do prunings at home, as long as they're not greatly thick, you know, branches, stick those in as well. They'll all rot down and say those lumpy bits are what's going to help retain the moisture. A little bit about what goes on when you put stuff in a compost bin. The bigger it is, the better, because the inside has more opportunity to get really, really hot. The thing that causes the heat is micro, microbial, I can never say the word, can never say it for microbial activity, okay, and it's little microbes that are actually causing that heat, and they start the process off, it starts to cool down, the worms move in, the worms carry on the composting process, okay, and throughout that, I mean, depending on the type of compost you have, it can be ready in two to three months, some people do compost monthly, I've never been able to do that, mine's twice a year I get some compost. When it starts to cool down, you turn it. What you're doing when you turn it is you're introducing a lot more oxygen and it'll heat up again. Microbes will take over, then the worms move in afterwards. I've got the plastic bins yeah. from the council. Well, the, plastic <laughs> bins. <laughs> sort of a, the theory behind the plastic sure bins at the councils. Idea. Well, I personally yeah, am not ever those. keen on them, no, no not okay. at all. I had one and it never seemed to produce much no, at the bottom. No. It was either very dry or very wet. Yeah. If it was very dry, I had to leave the top off. If it was very wet, I had mm. to make sure it was on all the time. The idea is that you don't have to turn them. You put stuff oh, in at the it? top oh, right. and then it comes out at the bottom. But what I did when I had one of those is I, ev um, every few months I just used to take the top off, tip it over, let everything mm. come out and then put it all back in again. Mm, okay. <laughs> right, then I ended right. up with these, which I find best. Yes. But everybody's different and the nice thing about those green kind of Dalek ones is they'll mm. sit in your garden and you don't see any flies or yeah. anything around them. Yeah. The carpet is to keep moisture in and also to stop too much moisture getting in but also to keep the heat in because yeah. that's really important as you need a certain amount of water. Mm. Cardboard also works well but um, with cardboard you do have to weight it down because you get a strong wind especially up here and yes. it will blow all over the place. Yeah. If it's smelly, it's too wet, if it's very, if you've got ants in it or if it's very dry you need to add moisture. Ants don't like a moist environment so if you've got ants in your compost heat it's too dry and you need to add a bit of moisture. It's also really good to add your wee. Mm. Is it? I, yeah, I've moved them for today, but I have got a little wee bucket. It's mm. not have a demonstration, please. No, if you, you don't, don't want a demonstration of that. Okay. No. Okay. Um, but that um, has lots of nitrogen in it. Helps to put nitrogen into your compost heat, so it's all very healthy stuff. I've had mice, which I don't mind. I've never had rats. Mm. Um, one thing you need to avoid to make sure you don't get rats is putting any cooked food in at all or any animal produce in at all. Mm. So by animal produce we mean meats, dairy, apart from eggshells, okay, nothing, eggshells. no animal food, but also any waste products from an animal. The only waste products that are okay are things like rabbits and guinea pig stuff right. because they're vegetarian animals and it's the meat animals that tend to have the pathogens and the things you don't want in oh, your compost. Right. Thank you so much for your time. I hope I've covered some of the essentials. Um, I've got dirty hands so I'll let you